he hasn't raced jet enough and they haven't figured each other out enough to where he knows by lining up next to him, it's going to get in his head. He figured that out and he figured out how, how to beat Ken Roxon. He figured out what he thought could beat Eli Tomac. Same thing with Chase Sexton. He hasn't figured that part out with jet. Jet would have to raise him. Like he needs to beat. race like you need to have that mindset like i'll die trying for this like no one else is gonna win i believe cooper webb like it's the reason he was able to beat you was because his mindset and he didn't even touch you little james bubba ducked you in the ama hall of fame but stewart has found a way to redefine this whole race course oh my goodness fastest guy i've ever seen on a bike Championship. You can call him whatever you want, he'll still kick your ass every Sunday. What's up guys? You know who it is, your boy JS7. And we have the Rewind Show, baby, from round 11 from Seattle, Washington. One of my favorite places, favorite place of a lot of these guys. We back, Jet Lawrence, after dominating the last three weekends. Wins Daytona! Back to back wins go to Chet Lawrence. He sweeps the triple crown and wins his third straight. Coming into Seattle, you know he felt comfortable, but last time we were here, we saw the beast mode. No, not Marshawn Lentz, Eli Tomac. We see Chase Sexton coming up, trying to get them things tempted out. And of course, you got the German chocolate going. Oh, by the way, the kitchen was open. 250 West, all those guys are back. So you know what we got to do, people. We're going to get into it. And yes, they did move Alex Martin. So from round 11, Seattle, Washington, let's do what we do. Let's get into it. So coming into this weekend, we knew Seattle is going to have ruts. Dry, wet, whatever it is. That track always has ruts. And I said before that the good thing with Seattle has a lot of rocks into it. So even if it rained, it was going to be not like your typical sloppy San Francisco mud fest. It would actually be just more thick and rutted. So it rained a little bit, made that track, you know, a little bit more difficult or the ruts coming out and maybe some of the transitions pretty soft, but overall the track, it was, they canceled free practice and, and the guys were able to get out there and just kind of do their normal thing outside of that one. But the track layout was like you expect in Seattle. It looked kind of the same as last year, maybe a little bit darker um, dirt wise, but overall Seattle, you already knew what it was going to be. They had some cool parts because of the rain. It actually made that track kind of somewhat like an outdoor track where they can actually hop over things and it kind of got rough. But nonetheless, those guys seemed like they enjoyed it. But I tell you one thing, it was a tough looking racetrack. You can tell everybody was tired. It's your typical Seattle light conditions. And boy, it showed during the main events. Jet Lawrence, guy been dominating. He's won the last three races. Won them all different ways. He started with Daytona up in Eli's house. And then he went to Birmingham, a place that nobody's been, but he won there too. And yes, Cooper Webb was close, but Cooper Webb wasn't close enough. And then we had the Triple Crown, something that he hasn't able to, been able to do. He dominated that as well, even though German Chocolate was there the whole time. But what we saw was the other guys starting to get more confidence because they had a chance to race him. And, and even though Jet ended up winning the race and he was clearly better, the other guys were just starting to feel like they could actually compete against him. So coming into this weekend, I didn't really think anything was changing. I thought Jet was going to be the favorite, which he was. I thought Jet would be fast, which he was. But the only thing that was really going to stop Jet was Jet Lawrence. The track itself, stiff motorcycle, the way he rides and being very patient, being able to jump around this racetrack, well, it was set up that way. The way he was jumping that wall – you saw the way he was doing it compared to like Cooper Webb, like Jet was making a lot of time doing it. And a lot of that was because one, the kid's talented, which they all are, but his suspension, having a little bit stiffer suspension, being able to get that thing to rebound and hop over those things, this track worked well for him. And then obviously going through the rhythm sections as those ruts kept getting deeper and deeper, having a stiff motorcycle just gives you more confidence to be able to know that you're gonna have some hold up going through it. So looking at the racetrack and looking away Jet Road, you could just tell like he felt more comfortable in those rhythm sections, being able to just continue charging through it because he had his suspension was stiffer compared to even a guy like Chase Sexton, where sometimes there was a hesitation. You see the the deep potholes, you see the rut really dark. 
Chase would make sure he would get in there and then kind of get through it where Jet was, you know, just kind of flowing through it. But the only thing that was going to stop him was him. And I said on the uh, Inside Line show was that now he's at the point where he had, you know, basically 25 points and he had a race lead. And I, I feel like with that, it puts him in a spot to where if he things weren't going right, he would kind of just back it down and just be situational awareness. Like, you know, if I can get a win, I'm going to get a win. But if not, then I'm going to just kind of get a third place or try to, you know, salvage some points, which is what ended up folding out. And by doing that would allow other guys like Chase Sexton, you know, Cooper Webb and other these guys kind of get in and start getting a win in there. Well, this weekend, Jet was so fast that I think once he went down the first time and when he was in there with Cooper Webb, like you could just tell it was coming to him too easy to just really back it down. Like I think if it was other races, once he went down, I don't think we would have saw any kind of charge. But Jet motorcycle, the way he was riding and just his momentum around the racetrack, and especially jumping that wall, it was he would just catch those guys anyway without really doing too much. And because the track was gnarly, it ended up it, the track itself really didn't get to him. It was the other things like he ended up having a lapper. And then he did what Chase said, um, where he ended up stalling the motorcycle. But just the way Jet was riding, it what he wasn't putting a charge. It was one of those easy races for him to make up time. But track got to him. Out of all the races this year, this was the one time that I, when you visually look at Jet, like he looked better than everyone else. Like there was a gap at this race. And I think, again, you go back to it, like the suspension and then having that little bit of buffer of points lead, which most people, like when you get in there, bridges get a little tight. You know, you start trying to protect where I think he had enough of a points lead and considering who was behind him, Cooper Webb is still going to be there. And the only way he gets back into it, if you let him back into it, but he didn't have, you know, the guy in second and third wasn't the guy who just won the last three races and they had, you know, DNF in the beginning part of the season and now they're catching fire, so you're worried about them just because they're hot. Well, the guy in second place is going to be there anyway, and then you got Chase Sexton. He's just trying to get his confidence by his interviews and what he was saying. He was just happy to be able to race Jet. So for Jet and his mindset, you just saw a kid that was really comfortable, and the bike looked great. He looked great. And again, as I said, how dominant he was at Anaheim and all the races that he won, even at Daytona, this race looked like it was an easy race that he was better than everyone else. And the time gap shows he was like a second and a half on the fastest lap time in practice. So when he got, he came up in the main event, the gate drops and then he actually gets passed. Like he, you're waiting and you're like, Oh, hold up. Like that's new. Like he's actually going backwards. And then I think in the first couple laps, he was like almost, you know, five, six, 10 seconds back on those guys. But all of a sudden, that gap went to like zero, it seemed like in two laps. And that's where I go back to him where the way he was riding, it was like he knew, I'm gonna let all these guys spread out, but once I get a clean lap, like I'm gonna catch them really easy. And that's what ended up happening. And then he ends up catching up to Cooper Webb. And then, so when you look at it, they jump off that triple or double because it was, they took out the middle part. And this is where I think Jet somewhat feeling invisible and kind of knowing that he was fast where he comes in on Cooper Webb, like Cooper Webb goes outside and people would ask like, well, if Jet was that close and he was worried about him running in, why wouldn't Cooper go inside? Well, Cooper wasn't even worried about Jet coming in because he was so far back. The speed gap that Jet had and the way he was riding the racetrack, I think made him, he got to Cooper a lot quicker or he thought that maybe he can go in and pass him, but he was too far back. He goes on the inside it almost looked like you're like, wait, I mean, why would you even try to make that pass? Like you're too far back. And I think uh, they said on a broadcast, like it was, you know, overly aggressive. Well, I think Jet was just like his speed and how quickly he caught Cooper Webb. He just comes in and he gets there a lot quicker. Well, the incident when he actually hits Cooper Webb, that's not where he actually break that. Like he, he knew once he went over that first little roller, like, okay, like I'm not going to be there. I don't know why or if he was really trying to get, get in there to actually stuff Cooper, but if he was, he tried backing out pretty early, way before he actually made contact. But 
once you're doing that, you're in the sand, you kind of slide. But it was one of those situations where I think Jet was so in his own zone and how quickly he caught Cooper that I don't even think he was really paying attention to like what ended up happening. Like I don't think he ever thought that I could actually might go down here or I'm too far back. He was just in the zone to the point where he caught him so quickly that he just felt like he was going to go around because there was no – there was really no reason to one to try to pass him or even try to go there because even if he was closer, the likelihood of them actually coming together and T-boning each other would have been even more risky than actually Jet running into him. And I think it was, again, he just kind of got lost in the moment because things were coming to him so easy that he was able to just go in and he tried going in for the pass. He ends up trying to back out of it, slots, hits Cooper Webb. You shall not pass! And you can tell by the way Cooper Webb went outside. And then I don't even think Cooper looked back because he was like, I mean, what was that? And then Jet said after the race. A little bit committed. I knew I was going to hit uh, Cooper. I could have been mean and hit him harder and just committed to it, but I didn't want to hit him. And then in that sand, you don't want to – it's very hard to pull up. So, uh, yeah, I ended up kind of being nice and checking up. I just up clipping the back, got off balance, and then uh, – Yeah, and he says after the race that he could have came in a little bit harder. But – I think once Jet look at the video, some things as you're racing, things seem like they're a lot closer than what they really are. You know, in Jet's mindset, like for him to try to make that pass, like maybe he thought he was closer and at the speed he can get to Cooper Webb, but from TV, you can clearly see it. And then once Jet actually hit him and realized as he was going in there, he wasn't as close. So I think what he says after the race is like, I could have, you know, like I backed out, I could have been mean or went in there and, and kind of, you know, hit Cooper. I think once you would have watched the crash, like you would have realized that, nah, like that wasn't even really an option. Like the only option you would have done, you would have been doing the Vince Freeze and, and uh, Kristen Craig incident. That's what would end up happening. Like you weren't even close enough. But sometimes when you're in a race, things happen and you feel like you're a lot closer to the guy than what it is. And I think that's what ended up happening because there's really no reason for Jet to go in there. But again, my whole point, it was the way he was riding and how quickly and easy he was able to make time. Sometimes you just get lost and you just get too confident and he ends up going down. That being said, he still could have caught him. Like once he got back up, he started coming back and probably just at that point, he's probably like, all right, I'm going to salvage it. But damn, like I'm catching these guys like two seconds, like and it's pretty easy. And then he stalls the motorcycle and then he gets into a lapper. So the whole point of the story Jet was clearly better than everyone else. The confidence that he was able to gain the last few weekends, he knows he's better. Those guys even knew he was better, but you still have to go out and race. What ends up happening, you know, Saturday night, I don't even think that's a rookie mistake. Like, I don't think Jet, you know, fell back in his rookie or that was a big mistake. I think the kid was, you know, more confident in, you know, things as they say in the mirror, objects in the mirror are closer than they appear. I believe that's what was happening and you know I think the confidence was it was more him just believing how easy things were happening um, rather than him just making a rookie mistakes and I don't think that would happen again so for everybody else if you think he's going to fall back and make those rookie mistakes uh -uh, they ain't going to happen but Jet is human Jet is young and sometimes like you believe you know I wouldn't even say he believes because he probably knows it um you think you, sometimes you can make things happen when you shouldn't be making things happen and things happen and you go down and you end up third place. But nonetheless, Jet Lawrence is fine and everybody else kind of knows that as well. So once Jet had all his issues and then even once he ran into the lapper, it opens up the door for Chase Sexton. Now, I think the way Chase has been riding, the way all year, like it's no secret, he's been kind of struggling and the speed thing is... The one thing that you never thought you would have to say with Chase, like that's the one issue that he's trying to gain confidence on. Well, last weekend we heard him on the podium. Like when was the last time you ever heard Chase Sexton get third place and be like, no, nah, I'm like kind of happy. Like, nah, bro, you just got third. Didn't obviously get the win, but uh, I feel like I rode pretty well tonight with my starts. Got a better start at the third main. Made it work somewhat. And Like Chase Sexton last year would be bummed, but considering where he's been at, um, it's small gains for him. And... He was just happy to kind of be in the race. So going into this weekend, you knew he was spunky. It was almost like he he won last weekend. Like the where he's been at to be able to 
somewhat race against Jet Lawrence, be that close to the lead. Like it was like a victory for him. So this weekend, he got out front. And when you watch Chase, like his issues are, are still there. Like when he tries to push it, when he tries to go fast on the motorcycle, like he, you know, he makes mistakes. Like it's not quite, it's better, but it's not quite there. And you can see him in the beginning part of that race, like he was making mistakes. But when Chase is able to kind of settle down, like he did in that heat race in Birmingham, they're like, man, I'm fast and I'm just cruising. He, it allows him to put that piece, that track together because Chase was fast. He was probably the second fastest um, guy on the racetrack outside of Jet because he was faster than Cooper. But he would make mistakes when he would try to push that level and try to almost somewhat, as he was getting confident, it's like you try to push even more and then you realize that limit. Well, Chase did a good job at not overdoing that limit and going down. He got lucky on a few of those, but also um, you got to give him credit for not hitting the ground. But it opened the door up once Jet was out because he knew there was no way he was going to keep Jet behind him the way he, how much time he was able to gain. But once Jet was out of, out there, then he started racing Cooper Webb and then the race was on. Well, Chase Exton, same thing as he has all year long. He overrides the motorcycle, you know, he struggles, but Chase has been doing better at making, you know, trying to find the the places that he can pick it up where it's not pushing the motorcycles like in the corners, like he got better in his corners. The only one he was struggling with was the one right in front of the mechanics area. Like, dude was losing all his time in the corners. But Chase's momentum, what I've noticed with him is that his momentum has picked up around the racetrack. So instead of Chase Exxon going from point A to B really fast, he goes from A to B and C all at the same pace. So he keeps his momentum going, just kind of going around the racetrack, which makes him not really have to override the motorcycle, which almost kind of like Jet Lawrence in the outdoors. To, and there's two ways to go fast. You can bulldog it, Jeremy Martin, Eli Tomac, or you can click up in higher gear and just have more momentum around the racetrack. Top speed, you probably won't be as fast, but when you put that whole track together, you can end up going faster and making up time and being a faster rider without putting yourself in over around the motorcycle. Or the last couple of weekends, that's what I noticed with Chase. And Saturday night was kind of the same thing. He was clearly faster than Cooper Webb, but sometimes you fall back in the old tendencies and you saw that with Chase. Like if Cooper got close to him or he got a mistake, then he would try to push a section, then he would make another mistake. But once he calmed down or when Cooper was in front of him and he lost all that time, you saw how quickly it was for Chase to make that time up. And I think just over time for him being up in front, being excited to be there, having a chance to win a race. And I would kind of consider if Chase won this race, it would probably feel like the first victory of the year because he won the San Francisco race, but that was a mud race. And then he won the Triple Crown. But you knew, I don't think he felt like he was the best guy. Well, outside of jet and i don't even know if they put him in that category as racing him it's kind of like with our odds sometimes you got to do the head to head without to do but chase would actually feel like he outraced cooper and he was better than everybody else so i think this victory of trying to get that was important which put a lot of pressure on him and he kind of overrode it but chase has been doing a good job at making himself you know gaining time and gaining speed without trying to push that motorcycle and you saw it this weekend but you can still tell like he doesn't really fully like trust in the in his bike and the reason you can tell that is because when when you're that much faster and unlike jet lawrence jet lawrence like he, i think he made mistakes because he won it was easy he knew he was faster and he just tried to make things happen that probably shouldn't happen where i think with chase he made the mistakes because he hasn't been there all year. He hasn't had that speed. Like he hasn't been faster than everybody else. When he raced his Cooper Webb, and even last time he raced him, um, even all last year, like Chase, he was fast, but he knew Cooper at the end of the race, like Cooper would be there. Well, Chase would fall back in the old tendencies and he would kind of push. And again, you can tell that by how much time he, how much faster he was, but he can never really pull away from Cooper or he would catch Cooper and then make another mistake. Like he didn't believe that he was actually rolling around the racetrack, how good he was because of all year. He hasn't been that fast. So nonetheless, I think Chase Sexton um, is slowly finding his rhythm and it's going to be hard for him to really just kind of beat Jet because 
in the, in the hindsight, I still don't think he believes that he has gotten the speed like he needs to. Like now he's starting to feel like he has a speed to outrun Ken Roxon, outrun um, Cooper Webb. But when you're looking at Chase, I think he's just trying to build the confidence to even gain to go hopefully win one of these races, but even go into the outdoors, not necessarily trying to build the momentum and win this championship in the, in the sense. And I just, I look at him and it's completely different for him. It's a uh, different mindset, and I said that at the beginning part of the year. Chase Sexton, his speed, and his race was going to be dictated off of, like, tracks. Well, kind of the same thing. So I think Chase is doing all he can. I think he's still the, – the mistakes that he was making weren't like last year. I think the mistakes that he was making was, one, trying to learn that motorcycle, and then, two, not being there, kind of being nervous, rather than last year, like, it was a technique thing or he was over on the track. I don't think Chase was making mistakes like that this year, but it was good to see him, um, you know, fight this thing and not actually hit the ground. But he still wasn't good enough to end up winning. So despite the mistake from Sexton, it's still one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, Sexton's still quite a bit faster than Cooper right now. Cooper's going to have to find something. He's going to have to dig deep and find some speed. When you look at Chase and you look at Jet, the reason why Jet was able to make up time, one, because his motorcycle was stiffer and I wouldn't even say, you know, it's technique wise. Yeah. But Chase kind of rides the KTM different than he does the Honda. Um, but when you're watching Chase go through the rhythm section, what I noticed is that it was like, there was a lot of movement in his motorcycles. Like, so when he was in the, in the rhythm sections, it was like, you can watch him and you can tell how deep the ruts are. Like his bike would get in and it would go down and then up. Or when you watch Jet, because his motorcycle is a little bit stiffer and maybe mo more momentum, whatever it is, it was like he was the rhythm. The ruts didn't look as gnarly as they did. The only time they look gnarly with Jet is like when he got cross rutted and he jumped sideways. But you never really saw Jet almost like you know getting in there and trying to make it and then pop straight up. Where the other guys, if your suspension soft, sometimes you get in the rut and then you try to make sure that okay the thing's gonna rebound like I think. Um, it, I think it should, Well, Jet didn't have that issue, so it allowed Jet to really ride this racetrack almost like it was like a free practice where the ruts, you know, he was concentrated on not cross-rutting instead of concentrating on the ruts being too deep. Where Chase Sexton and other guys, they were concentrating, like one, not getting cross-rutted, but because the ruts were deep and that their, bottom, their bike could bottom out and it might not rebound like he, they wanted to, therefore, they had a hesitation on getting through the rhythm sections. And that was the difference when you look at Jet and why he was able to make up so much time is because you took out that whole whole part of the mentality for him. It's kind of like a golfer. You know, they said the worst thing in golf is a two-way miss, a miss that you can hit a left and right. Well, they had the left and right going on. Jet only had the right. So he blocked out one side of the racetrack, which is he was blocking out. I don't have to hesitate on worrying about my bike bottoming out because I know it's going to hold up. I just got to make sure I'm in these ruts straight. And I think that's where you, when you put the whole racetrack and the track that was so rutted, that's why I believe Jet was actually making up so much time because, you know, he was just, just racing the track. He wasn't worried about the thing bottoming out and rebounding on him where those guys were. Another thing that happens on these tracks is, when you get up in, in the tracks like soft like it was, um, sometimes when you get into a slower corner, it's, it's easy to stall the motorcycle. Well, the first one Chase did, that was because the track was soft. He jumped into that wall jump. That was one of the softer parts, like that they had a lot of rut. Some of that sand was in there. You could tell he jumped in there, kind of hit hard, bike stall, racing, no big deal. The other part, he said he hit the tough block and it could have dragged his brakes, but just the way it looked like where he was in that corner, when you get in altitude and all these bikes are fuel injected, sometimes what ends up happening is I did this in Detroit. You can have a motorcycle that's the, it's not clean on the bottom, like the fuel injected, like the, um, almost back in the day when you had carburetors, like when you hit the throttle, like sometimes it has like a little, like I say, gurgitation, like it's a hesitation on there. Well, when you get in these slow parts of the race um, racetrack, you're off the gas. The idle can change because of that. So when the bike's not properly running, the idle can go up or down. 
And usually when that happens is when you watch a guy go in the corner and just stall it. It's not like Chase hit the break too hard. It's not like that first one where he jumps in that wall. It's when he gets in there and he lets off the throttle. Too much fuel can go to the engine and it can stall out. Sometimes you'll see a, you know, a bike you know, backfire, like fire fl flames out. Well, a lot of that comes from just, again, the bike not perfectly being um, you know, running and clean on the bottom. And because you are in higher up, sometimes when you're in colder weather, like the weather changes from earlier during the day, changes from the beginning part of the heat races to the main event gets colder, the bike changes and having a track that's soft. And every time you slow down, it pulls the motorcycle down. And considering that the corners that the corner that he stalled it in was a slow, slow corner that he was off the gas, it's not surprising that the guy can stall it. And that could be because he hit the the uh, tough block, could be because he hit his brake. But the way I saw it, it reminded me when in 2014, like I stalled my bike, kind of in the same situation. Like there, was, the thing wasn't running cleanly. The 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 idle was going up and down, and I was because there was too much fuel getting into it. So a lot of that could be just because of the weather outside and considering that how soft that track was, that Chase stalled the motorcycle. And that's, to me, what it kind of looked like because I don't think he would have stalled it at that point. Usually when a guy actually hits the brakes too hard, they come in way too fast, and you can see them sliding into the corner, and they stall it. Or it looked like Chase was actually – hit the brakes and he was in the corner and then the thing just shed off on him. And that to me looks like it's more of just kind of the fuel injection and the thing running up and down and the idle changing on him. So yeah, I, I think it was more, I would say it's bike more than chase to be honest with you. With Jet being out, the battle was on between Cooper and Chase. Now, I, I don't, if Chase would have cleaned up the mistakes, Chase, was clearly faster than Cooper. I think Cooper knew this race that Chase was better. I think Cooper was struggling, and you can tell um, Cooper wasn't Cooper. Like he was kind of holding on to this victory, and because Cooper Webb, his mindset, and because it is Chase Sexton, and he he's had success against Chase, and he saw Chase making the mistakes, and you know Chase saw in a motorcycle that he knew that even though Chase is faster. I don't think Chase really fully believes that he's faster and that it's becoming a lot. It's actually hard for Chase to go that fast when it probably shouldn't be. Um, I don't think if Chase would have if Chase would have cleaned up the mistakes, he would have won, clearly. And I think the reason I say that is because when you watch Cooper, there was really no like there was no games. Like when you watch Cooper, the way he beat Chase at Tampa last year, like Cooper could make up time like he was going around the racetrack. He was changing his lines and it looked easy for him to do it. Almost looked like, you know, when you watch Jet, like it was easy for Cooper to make up time when he felt like in Tampa. Well, this one, Cooper was hanging on like he was hanging on like as sometimes like being in front. This is where it hurts you, where you're in Chase's situation. Chase is only going off of like past history. Chase knows. Cooper's strong, and if I allow him to be here, especially with five minutes left, like he's probably going to get me. So his mindset is like, I need to get away from him and try to break him because I am like Chase knew he was faster, but he didn't know if Cooper was kind of playing the game or was Cooper Webb, unlike Cooper Webb has been in the past, um, that once he decides to go fast, he's going to make that pass and charge. He didn't understand that Cooper was like one corner from – basically kind of giving up and just taking a second place. And that's what sucks when you're in front because Chase can't see that. All he knows is past history and how he feels. So he kept making mistakes, but he didn't see Cooper making those mistakes. And when you're watching Cooper, like he was kind of, as I was saying with Jet Lawrence, didn't have the fear of making, like having the bike bottom out. I saw Cooper Webb struggling on making sure, like he was just getting through the rhythm section. And he was, as Chase if Chase got a, like a clean lap, Cooper was just hoping that he would make a mistake and all that. You can tell that the way he was riding. Cooper wasn't even on the motorcycle. He, like he didn't look the same on the motorcycle. It looked like a guy had an arm pump. But because he's able to beat Chase and because he was able to see Chase make those mistakes, Cooper knew mentally that I'm still in this because Chase believes like I'm playing around or I'm still here. And normally Chase would have probably, if he was comfortable and if he knew how I was feeling, Chase would have just ran off. 
Chase would have just said, like, I'll just put two laps in. I would have broke Cooper. But because he didn't do that, Cooper's hung around, hung around, and he was able to get him. But it was the first time I seen Cooper Webb ever win a race uncomfortable, right? Like when you going back to Tampa, like he looked comfortable. Like he's speed wise, it's always been the same. The guy's usually faster than him. Guys always faster than him during the day. But when it comes to the main event, Cooper's the strongest and he looks well put together. Where this race, it looked like Cooper was struggling. Like he didn't find the Cooper Webb flow. He looked like he did in practice where maybe a day he's off. But somehow he was able to win that race. And there was no games being played. There was, like, Cooper knew, you know what? Like, Chase allowed me to win this race in a sense. Like, Chase was faster. Chase stalled the motorcycle. And, yeah, I put the pressure on. And because of past history, Chase was thinking about me. But in reality, like, I was barely, like, I'm hanging on. Like, I can barely hold on to the motorcycle. And... I was able to win that race, but I wasn't even the best guy at this where the other races like Tampa, I think Cooper knew once that main event came and he got through those first few laps and he saw Chase or whoever it was not, you know, yard pulling away from him. Like he knew at the end of the race, he was going to win. I don't think at any point of that race, Cooper thought he was going to win that race. Like, I think Cooper was like hanging on. He's like, I'm still here. I can't even hold on. Chase stalled it. Oh my God. I got three seconds. Half a lap later, Chase is back on me. Like, he was kind of waiting, and it just never did. And then once you get to the last lap, anything goes at that point, and you're trying to hold on. But it was cool to watch Cooper win a race like that. And and watching Chase, this is where I say he fully, he's not back, and you can tell he doesn't fully believe on the speed. It's because Chase wasn't even mad that he didn't win that race. Like, Chase knew he kind of gave that away. But if you listen to his interview, he was happy that he's getting better. And he was happy that he was able to be up front and lead laps. And that's hard to, like if he didn't think that way, he would have won that race. To give it up to the team, it put a lot of work in to get me happy and uh, we're, uh, we're climbing that ladder. Like if Chase Sexton had that mindset where he knew he was fast and everything, let's say he did this for like three or four weeks and he got put back in the same situation, Chase would have won that race because he would have been there, done that, and you to cross that bridge where Chase hasn't been able to do that all year long. So as Chase was there, he didn't fully believe that he can actually win the race because he hasn't been up there and he knows Cooper Webb. And I think that allowed, that's why when Chase got off the track, they shook hands and got, for two guys that have bad history, that was strange by the way, but that's why Chase got on the podium and he was happy. Like, yeah, he knew he threw it away and yeah, like he wanted to win, but he wasn't mad. And that was because he's still building confidence because he's not there yet. And Cooper Webb got on the podium. He said it was morning, morning wood kind of arm pump. But even him, in the past, he would have been like, yeah, I, I knew if I just needed to be there, I was going to win. But Cooper, he gave Chase props like, yeah, I might have got lucky on that one. Like, yeah, I got him lucky. And Cooper Webb's the type of person that, yeah, he, he wants to win and he'll be aggressive. But he's not a cheater and mean in the sense if the guy's better than him he would acknowledge that just like he did this weekend they got off the podium they got off the track they shook hands cooper acknowledges that hey you gave me one like you were better where in the past i think cooper probably would have been like uh -huh. like yeah last time they were there he gave him a bird so um it was just interesting to watch those two guys racing in two different spots in their career i think cooper's riding the best he has all his whole career. I think Chase is more consistent than he has his whole career, but he's not as fast as he has been. And so it's it's cool watching them being so close together and finish that race off, but in two different spots or where they're at uh, mentally. And um, I think because of Jet Lawrence being so dominant and because of some of the issues that happen, you know, some of the controversies that Jet has caused, it makes guys like Cooper Webb and Chase Sexton actually – somewhat team up against each, with each other and instead of being like ah oh, i'm just worried about beating him like i'm trying to beat you i don't like you i think both of those guys like when they race they would race almost as teammates like they would race not trying to slow each other down because the last person they want to win is jet lawrence they they rather 
the other guy win than having Jet Lawrence. And that's the kind of way they race. And that's why when they got off at the end, they shook hands. And it's kind of – that was all caused by the way Jet has been somewhat – so dominant, so much hype, and then some of the controversies, the baby gift, the Anderson stuff, that it makes all the guys in the field somewhat go against this kid because he is that good, and they know he's that good. And yet, sometimes, like, when the guy's that much better, you got to use a team of people to end up slowing him down and beating him that way instead of just one individual. So, um, But it was cool to see those guys have respect. I think there was more worried about – just trying to win the race and trying to stop this kid from being so mentally dominant that they they put their issues aside and that's what you saw this weekend. So watching that race on Saturday night, it actually brought me back to my days. And the way those guys are racing, it's like when you're when you have an opportunity to be, you know, in a mud race and you're battling somebody in a mud race and it's getting down, like you 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 start worrying about like jumping the jumps and as i said everyone outside of jet lawrence was worried about you know the thing huck a buck and bottom and out and endo and they were trying to get through it where jet was just like i'm just trying not to get cross right so when you were watching chase and cooper it was like you were watching two guys just like just trying to jump the jumps like you don't even care if the dude gets up beside you but if he gets up beside you like you got to be on the inside and the reason that is, is because with all the ruts, they knew if they were on the outside and they left the inside open, especially going down this long rhythm section, that they had to jump the jump because they couldn't cross a, across the track. Like you can't move across the track without getting cross rutted or you end up just shooting across it. So when you watch Cooper and uh, Chase race, it was like they were one would hit a triple and the other one make a mistake and then all of a sudden the other the other one make a mistake then the one would pop up and they were just trying to get to the end of the rhythm section and then shut that guy off um and it was it's actually a fun battle a fun nerve-wracking battle because you know you're trying to go as fast as you can but you can't go too fast because you can end up off the track which they almost did a few times and as you're racing the other guy you're still trying to be concentrated on racing the racetrack and so you're in a spot where it's like you're driving down the road and you and your homeboy y'all decide to start speed racing you think you're fast and furious but you got traffic so you're trying to beat your homeboy but then you got to worry about grandma and grandpa and sue and cindy and cynthia in front of you in the car so you're trying to go as fast as you can but then you got to worry about them that's how they were racing and so it was cool to watch that and it just reminded me of some of the days like when i raced ricky at San Francisco, you know, I would be so mad because I couldn't hit the double, but then like he would pull away like three seconds, but then I was able to hit the double and he didn't, and I was able to catch him back up. So it was like a turtle slow racing, but in the speed sense, and you're trying to do both things, race the racetrack and then race this guy. And you know, once you get committed, like you're committed and there ain't nothing you could do. So it was cool to watch that. And then the last lap, <laughs> it was all like it didn't matter like I don't even care if I bet Cooper was like I don't even care if I had to roll all these jumps as long as Chase is on the outside of me in these corners like I'm straight and that's what you saw when Cooper got in that whoop section Chase sent it in Cooper messed up because he knew Chase sent it in and he was closing then his foot comes off hits the wall jump Chase is going to go around the outside Cooper decides to go to the outside block him off and then it was all racing but it, I'm sure they had a good time racing that uh, racing that track that way and racing each other. But it just reminded me back in the day of, you know, trying to speed race while you're worrying about something in front of you, but you're just trying not to let that guy pass you. And that's what, what was going on. There was a part of the track where actually where Cooper and Jet got into it. Um, there was a part of the track where Chase was going inside and he was, you know, going inside and like doubling into that, that hole. And, it was in the first 12 minutes of the race, it was slower because jumping that wall jump was way faster. But as you chase, he said on the podium, he never even thought about that. His mechanic put it on. And usually when a mechanic says, do something that you haven't done all day, that means like you're going to lose the race because you didn't jump this. Kind of like Eli not jumping the quad, jumping the quad, like that particular part of the track, those guys were gaining so much time. Well, I think with, 
Chase, he was out front, so he didn't have the luxury of knowing those guys were even jumping that. And in his mindset, the jumping the wall wasn't even really a thought. So the only other ways, if I went outside, I would jump into the wall, which the last time I did that, I stalled the motorcycle. So I don't want to do that. So he figured by going inside, he can try to build his line and jump into that roller roller section and not hit in the face of that wall. One, it wouldn't stall the motorcycle. And two, by going inside, it wouldn't allow anybody to pass him because he didn't know they were gaining that much time on by going outside. Well, what Cooper was going outside because he was struggling to hold on to Chase the whole track. The one thing that Cooper's always been good at in his whole career is corners. You know, going lower in the corners where when you got arm pump, even going low, it's almost like the worst thing because that means you got to clutch in it, gas in it. You, when you got arm pump, you'd rather go outside, make that corner a big rolling corner. Well, that's not what Cooper does in these situations. Like he goes lower and he goes places where people aren't. So he couldn't do that. So Cooper jumping that wall jump was the only place and the only reason why he was able to keep Chase even close. So he knew every lap he had to go outside and try to do and try to jump over that wall. The difference I say between those two was Chase was out front. Chase's mindset, like he hasn't been out front, like he's happy to be there. And, you know, he's nervous, he's making mistakes, you know, but he's still fast and which makes Chase race somewhat head down. Like he's not looking at the mechanics area. Like he's just focused on not trying to make a mistake where, where Cooper was, I think Cooper was more aware of what was going on. Like he wasn't really like he was trying to catch Chase, but he really wasn't trying to catch Chase. So he was more, okay, how do I survive this track? He's probably looking at his mechanic and he's probably noticing that jet is catching heaps of time. And so it's either his mechanic or he saw somebody else jump it, which because of his mindset and because he had arm pump and because he was more not so focused in on just chasing chase, allowed him to realize that Jet was making up time and that whether the mechanic put it on or he saw it somewhere else, um, jump it made him be like, okay, I'm going to go outside and jump this wall jump because one, that's going to make it a lot easier on me. And I got to stop the bleeding from Jet because I don't want him to really come up and pass me. So I think Cooper was racing more aware and more focused in on the track and circumstances where I think Chase was more racing because he was out front, more just strictly head down, which would make him not pay attention to anything else, which he never even thought about going to outside, which he never saw his mechanic and where Cooper was in a different spot. So it Cooper was going outside, jumping the wall. And then he saw once he did that, that time that Jet was making on him, that kind of slowed down quite a bit. And then the time that he started making on Chase was quite a bit uh, more. But it wasn't easy for Cooper to do it because little short man, like he was coming up short. You could tell he was uncomfortable doing it, but he knew he needed to do somewhat to do that to either win the race or keep Jet behind him. Here you go. Oh, oh, I didn't quite get it that time. Yeah. I thought Cooper's mindset coming into this race was the same as it was a couple weeks ago, like he lost points to Jet, but in reality, I don't know. You know, I've talked about what makes Cooper special when there's nothing special, but that's what makes him special, and it's hard to quantify what it is. Like, well, he doesn't really have the speed, even though he, I mean he did have a fast, you know, pull, you know, in one of the practice this year at Daytona, and that he finds speed somewhere, and he's gotten faster, but he's still lacking that department but he's always there well what happened at the Birmingham and then what happened at Indianapolis like I think his mindset going into this weekend was the same and after this weekend him winning a race it doesn't really change anything like Cooper Cooper feels as if like if he's there like he's he's gonna always have a chance and jet them he knows that but I mentioned a few weekends ago where it's like if you if you get Cooper and you hold him at like that three to five seconds and you don't allow him back into it, then he's not going to he's not going to just go faster. Like he's not going to pick up a second and drop the lap time. Like he's not going beast mode. Like he's just going to be there. If you allow him to drop that down at the end of the race, and that's what happens mostly with these guys. They make a mistake. That's that five seconds that goes down to three seconds, and then now Cooper believes and then you start knowing how strong that dude is and then you change and then he comes up and he gets you well 
my point is the the way the points have been it's almost if cooper's been like somewhat that three to five seconds and that's where jet was like he's there but he's not there like he's he's waiting for jet to kind of make a mistake which makes cooper continue just riding the way he is it won't be until one like you know jet makes a mistake like tonight or saturday night and then he brings him back down then maybe cooper might start trying to play but you know play the game but he still is still too early in the season and jet has been clearly like better and cooper won this race but i mean i don't even think he felt like he was better than chase as far as speed was and then he knew jet kind of threw it away so i don't think his mindset's going to change to where he's going to get confidence and now like he's going to go faster kind of like these other guys where they emotionally like chase rode different this weekend because of last weekend and he rode different last weekend because the weekend prior like that heat race victory that he had in birmingham allowed chase to once he made up that time that second um triple crown and then once he was able to stay there last weekend and that third one he shows up this weekend feeling like he can where i don't think cooper is going to race that way and the reason i'm going back to the point where jet this points gap almost has him at like a five second gap, like where it's just kind of there and he's just going to be there. He's going to be solid. He's going to keep doing it. And if he allows him to win these races, like Saturday night, he's going to win them, but it's not going to change the way he's riding against jet because he's still not that close. And when jet's still better, he's still not there. He's still got to wait. Now, if something happens this weekend in triple crown, then Cooper Webb start racing Jet differently. Like maybe not, he still won't go no faster, but he would actually start getting into the mindset where what he started doing to Eli last year. He started lining up to Eli on the gate at Glendale last year. He started playing the games like he started doing those things. And the reason I said Cooper is the same person and he hasn't changed because he hasn't done any of that to Jet. And he's he's somewhat there in the points. He's 16 points back now. But he's not he's not playing those games where he knew like Eli like he all right like he's starting to see cracks in him and he's Eli's making mistakes he's starting to allow Cooper getting back into it Cooper double downs uh, he double downs on that and he tries to get um Eli off his kilter start making mistakes and he starts trying to get in his head well if you have if you looked at Cooper all year he's been second he's beat Jet he's had Jet out front Jet made mistakes Jet made a mistake this weekend, but Cooper hasn't said anything. He hasn't said anything about Jet. He hasn't, like, lined up next to him. Like, he hasn't done any of that. And that, to me, tells me where Cooper is. He's still racing like he's been racing all year long. And if Jet allows him to get even closer to him, just like that five seconds going down to three seconds, then he'll start lining up next to him. But he's still, in Cooper's mind, he won this weekend, but he would almost feel like he's somewhat lucky in the sense he had arm pump and situation and he was able to win it. But it's not like he's beating um, Jet or beating those guys like how you won at Tampa. Like, you know what? I'm here. I'm strong. I'm just going to beat you. And you know I'm going to beat you. Just I'm in your presence. I'm going to win. He's He didn't do that this weekend. So his mindset's really not going to change. And which for us as fans makes Cooper dangerous because – the last couple weekends, most guys, we saw what happened to the other guys. This point, as soon as I think it's spread it out, you don't even hear from him anymore. Well, points got spread it out over the last few weekends, but Cooper, he's not dictated off that. Like he's still kind of in his own lane, which allows for us for fans, he's gonna be there every weekend, and those guys know that. And so I just think you can always you you can learn a lot by a rider, by what they say. And what they do and how they ride on the racetrack. I mean, yeah, clearly they scrub and they feel pretty good. But if you want to know if his mindset's changed, look what he's doing. Is he's doing the same thing he did at Anaheim? Like he's doing the same thing he's been doing every weekend. And it won't be until we get a few more races in or something happens this weekend. If he gets closer to a jet, then that five seconds goes to like two, and then we got a race, and then you'll start seeing that. But right now, I think Cooper is doing the right thing. He needs to keep racing. And hopefully at this point, it's hard to be somewhat in a spot to where, you know, maybe you're not as quite as better as that guy as far as speed wise, and that you're hoping 
for him to make a mistake like he did on on last weekend, it's hard to really get into somebody's grill when you know that. I think every person that Cooper's raced in the past, like he can actually make up time in his presence, can change things, and he can find the speed to where he could be somewhat on the same speed. He hasn't raced yet enough, and they haven't figured each other out enough to where he knows by lining up next to him, it's going to get in his head. He figured that out, and he figured out how, how to beat Ken Roxon. He figured out what he thought could beat Eli Tomac. Same thing with Chase Sexton. He hasn't figured that part out with Jet. He's figuring it out, but he hasn't done that, and that's why he's not, um, you know, he's not trying to get an all up on his grill because, hey, who knows? He might line up next to him and might get his doors blown off. Jet might do the opposite of what those other guys did, and Cooper's not there yet, so he's not going to do that. So I think for him, his mindset, this victory is still the same, and I think this next week at the Triple Crown is going to be a big test for him because – I wouldn't say that's his probably his forte, the you know speed game. But even though St. Louis is probably going to be rutted, track going to break down. I think it might be like somewhat like Dallas was last year, where he was able to win that one um, because the track broke down in that second and third race. He got better, uh, but it's going to be a big weekend for him, and I think it's going to tell you a lot with um, Jet and how he races this mindset. I expect Jet to come out and be like fully locked in and try to stop stop that train because he knows you don't want to allow this dude back in. I expect Chase Sexton to continue doing what he's doing the last couple weekends, feeling like he's just happy and being closer. But overall, like I think it's going to be down to Cooper Webb and uh, Jet Lawrence. And right now, Cooper Webb is many races is that like we've been talking about waiting for Chase. We've been waiting for Eli and you know, how dominant Jet's been. Cooper Webb's like still right here. And I go back to it. We always talk. What makes them special? We don't know. And that's frustrating when you look at them. You're like, we don't know. But I know. He knows. They know. What makes them special is that he ain't special, which makes him damn special. And that's hard to beat when you just don't know where it's coming from and how the dude does it. And what does he keep doing? This is like his third one. He's won them all differently this week. And they're just gritty. Up until this weekend, he's had, what, two races, two race victories, more than anybody else outside of Jet. And he's only led five laps. He led more laps this weekend, probably doubled down on that. And Chase was feeling the best he has all year. Jet was probably the most dominant he looked all year. But somehow Cooper Webb, with that morning wood, was able to get one of these. And what did he got for him, Cole? Suntan, neck's on fire. Neck was on fire. I don't even think Cooper, Cooper was like... <sighs> man, did I really win this thing? Are y'all going to win? And boy, you got to get Cooper credit. Once you nervous, once you get people, that last corner, once you waiting for him, like you were like, oh, Chase going to go inside. And Cooper did what he did. Like he went, he made something that was so exciting on that last corner, like waiting for the action to blow up, see if Chase is going to chiz him or whatnot. And then Cooper just went slow, kind of just down. And he made something so exciting, just looked boring, and he won the race. And that's what he does every time. Cooper Webb, Nick Burton. 250s. It's West Coast Mania. West Coast, baby. Is the kitchen open? We going to Levi Kitchen. First time with the red plate. Soul red plate leader. Him being the guy. We on the West Coast, baby. It ain't danger time. We taking a break from the Far East Coast. And we have Far East Coast back. Joe Shimoda, but he's still trying to get out the gate. When he get out the gate. He don't really go that much faster. It's a weird situation, but hey. But it was Levi Kitchen. Just like Jet Lawrence, he was dominant. Like, Levi looked better than everyone. I mean, that main event, he was better than everyone. And it was the first time all year that we could say one rider looked better than the rest. George Smith looked good, and he's he was riding better than he has all, I mean, probably his whole career. And I felt like with him, he was the one that probably had the most speed. And Levi was that consistent, everything working fine, like just kind of solid there. Things work out like he's going to be fast, but he's not going to be off the podium. Just let everybody does. And RJ doing RJ stuff, you know, the popcorn man didn't fall. Like RJ would just didn't have any money to buy any popcorn this weekend. He was just there. But Levi, Levi showed up with a fresh pair of jeans. He said the kitchen was open. He had family, friends, so you know everything was discounted. And Levi 
put on a dominant, dominant performance. George Smith, ain't no point. You can send the text. She was not reading it. And I do think because of that made Jordan Smith kind of fall back into what happened the last couple of years when he's been so good. He's made mistakes this year, but he's been so good at recovering. And it's easy to do that because you know you're probably the class of the field or you're probably the one guy that, like, I'm still fast. So I make a mistake, I'll get up, and I'm still the best one here. I can come up to the pack. But this weekend, he wasn't. Like, you were out there on Levi. And then Levi ripped your clothes off and put on his jeans and just dipped out. And there was nothing you can do. And you watch Jordan Smith every lap like there was another little mistake. And you could tell he was getting frustrated because that's the first time all year that he's been ran away from. And there was really nothing you can do. And Levi was doing it pretty easy. And I think that frustrated him. Then he goes down. Now, I don't think Jordan was riding over his head. He was crazy. I think that track was gnarly. But the mistake came. And I think that was all caused because how good Levi was. And with him, we all knew he had talent. I think the Mitch Payton and where he's at is the perfect scenario for him. And since some people can't get off the gate and the other ones still just trying, he ran out of money. He wasn't worried about the popcorn man because he didn't have no money. And then Jordan Smith, he I think he's still frustrated with that text and getting dumped. This is up for Levi to keep going and keep that kitchen open. So... I ain't not really got much to say. Kitchen was wide open. Levi was dominant. And he looked like he did all year long. Like, he didn't look like he went any faster. But you can tell either the red plate or whatever it was, Levi was on another level. And to do routes like this, it's over. It's over. But that's why the 250 class, you just never really know. Somebody might get off the gate and actually show up and get off the gate first. But Levi, this was his house. And Levi, I know, baby. I know you won the triple crown. You won the triple crown. And they they special because overall you get a neck burn. But they don't really get neck burns. They'll be trying to save money. They didn't even light the candles for you. But you get a neck burn, but you don't feel the neck burn. But this time, you got the neck burn. Like the official neck burn. And all these riders, they know that's the one thing you wanted to get. And Levi, it ain't your first one, but it's your first real one where you felt the flames and you deserved it, son. I know you was back there souffléing, sautéing, baking, souffle. Well, I said souffle. You were lighting up the kitchen because the kitchen was on fire and the back of your neck was on fire. And what do you got for him called? Hit for Suntan. Neck's on fire. Levi, the kitchen was on fire, baby, but it was on fire because you said it. You said it. You own the insurance company. You ain't worried about none of Like, look, you set him on fire and you had homeboy hot. You had hot. He went down, he got up, he went down, he got up, and he was crossing the track. People was like, man, he didn't black flag to do. I don't even think Jordan, he would just knock the wind out of him. He was like, huh, huh. and you can't breathe like that. What do you want to do? Do These ruts are crazy. These riders jumping in, they can't turn. He's just going out there. But Jordan Smith, keep your head up, son. Keep your head. Joe, come on, Joe, what's up? Joe, what's up? You got off the gate in the heat race. And, yeah, you know, I look, you went down. Hey, you go down. And you had somebody fast behind you. I expect him, you know, he's pretty good. But Joe, ah, yo, Far East Coast, come on, baby, come on. Come on, Joe, it's Joe time. Joe time, you were good to get third place, but you should be winning these things. I mean, I, no disrespect, Levi. I don't know, I think Levi was on that level. But no, normally, you know, Joe, you're good, you're good. But you better be better. Otherwise... You ain't going to have no money. You can't get in the kitchen because the kitchen might be closed. So, Levi, good job. All right, people, that was it from whatever we were just at. And we know what we got to do. We're going to my favorite time, your favorite time, stews and stews. And I know somebody's going to be happy that they get the official neck burn. Keep that kitchen open. We'll be right back. Hey, guys, what's up? It's your boy, JS7. And I want to welcome Factors Meals as being a part of the podcast. They got ready-to-go meals. And you know your boy, I like variety, and they got plenty of them. In case you got the kids, you're running late, or you're doing your podcast and you need something to grab quickly, well, they got ready, fresh, chef-cooked meals ready to go for you. You can grab them at any time. You got a bunch of different options from Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto Options, which I have no idea what that is. That's not in part of mine. 
but you got that option as well. All ready to go in under two minutes, which is the way I like it. They're never frozen. It's flexible for your schedule. So if you eat like a bird like me, you can get as less, or if you like a lot, you can get as much as you need. We've done the math and you know how my math is. It's a lot cheaper than takeout. So if you want your high quality food, make sure you go to factormeals.com slash Bubba's World 50 and get yours. Yeah, that's right, 50% off. Make sure you go Bubba's World 50 and we'll see you there. What's up guys, your boy JS7. Look, if you ain't got time to watch our whole video, which I don't know why you don't, make sure you go here and subscribe and check out our new channel where we're gonna have some smaller clips, some clips that you haven't seen on our main show just for y'all. So make sure you subscribe, click, comment, do whatever you do, watch our whole show, but come to this channel as well, check out our stuff. See you there. All right, guys, that was it from Seattle where we saw Cooper Webb do what Cooper Webb does. And then we saw the kitchen wide open. But before we get into stews and stews, we ask you to submit your questions, See what you guys want to talk about because we want to hear from the fans. I want to hear from y'all. And y'all did. So let's get into that, Cole. Let's get some questions. So at Dieter Lassat, not sure if that's the right way to pronounce it, but he asks, has Bubba ever suffered from arm pump like Cooper did? What up, D? I'm just going to say it like that because I don't want to get it wrong like somebody just did maybe on this. Probably can't pronounce it. Have I ever suffered from arm pump? Yeah, I have. I have. 2004. Hangtown, that second motor with Stefan Roncata, one of gnarliest battles I was in. I had an arm pump from the first lap. I actually had trigger finger where my middle finger was locking up and not the bird heard around the world. It was locked up. So, yeah, I've had it. I don't know if I've had it. No, I would say I had it like Cooper Webb, but you just got to deal with it just like Cooper did. When It's easy to deal with it when you're out front and you have a chance to win, and that's what Cooper did. But, yeah, we all go through it, arm pump. So Tyler M. Johnson asks, how is how is it that Cooper is able to pull off wins like this? Nowhere to be seen all day and then comes out and wins. Is it a mental thing? Does he take longer to figure out, figure out tracks? Is it because he makes less mistakes in situations like this from going just slightly slower? That is the question. Good question, Tyler. Yeah, I think everyone, including all the riders, try to figure it out as well. I don't even know if Cooper knows, but past history, circumstances, like he's done this before and certain things that you've you got some good things for it. if you've done it before. It could be a positive, and if you've done it before and it's a negative, it's a negative. Where Cooper has done this in a good way, he's been able to be 13 fastest and get his doors blown off in the heat race, but if he's out front or somewhere up near the lead, they know, he knows, and he just figures it out. So it's 100% mental. I don't think it's he's figuring out the track. I don't think it's like a bike setup. I think Cooper just does what he's done in the past, and he's able to do the same thing in the past, and he did it again Saturday night. So this is actually Danny Stevenson. Uh, Danny Stevenson, Debo360, asks, why did Chase kill the motor more than once? Fact, most of them no longer use the clutch as much. What up, Danny? What up? I was actually just listening to him the other day, actually. He used to call some of the race. What up, D? Yeah. Now, I don't know if you could say they don't use a clutch like I do, like not hand on the clutch. I actually feel like a lot of these guys, they went back to the hands on the clutch. But I feel like with Chase, when it depends on where people stall it at. I think this weekend with Chase, it was more of a bike. And as you know, Denny, like when you get low in those corners and you get off the throttle, if that thing's not running right, a lot of fuel can get in there, the idle changes, and the bike can just shed off. And I think that's where it really comes into it. So it's like a perfect mix of you're hitting the brakes, maybe you're going to reach for the clutch, and the bike misfires, and then it stalls because of that, rather than, I think I don't think it's they're going in the corners with their hands off the clutch and just stalling it that way, because it would be more, you would see that more likely, and more often. I think it was just Seattle, bike not being right and he stalled it but yeah good question but you know how them things are Danny they they ain't running right you really know it when it's on that low rpms Thai man 11 asks why didn't why doesn't Sexton ever try to put a little dirtiness in his riding like some block passing or being extra aggressive what up T I mean dang you want some violence you want violence out there but hey that is a good question I do think Chase should get a little aggressive I think that would actually help him overall. You know, like, I mean, we kind of did that in, in the past, not 
you know, 30 um, block passing, but a mindset, get nasty. Like you're, you don't have to hit people to have a dirty mindset, which is going to allow you to, to go out and race. Like you need to have that mindset. Like I'll die trying for this. Like no one else is going to win. I believe Cooper Webb, like it's the reason he was able to beat you was because his mindset and he didn't even touch you. So yeah, whether it's for this championship or whatever, I think Chase would be served well for getting a little Hayden Deegan in him or a little Cooper Webb's because he's got talent, he's got speed, a little dirtiness might help him out a lot. Aaron O'Keefe, 13, asks, do you think Eli Tomac should have stayed with his plan of retiring last year? He hasn't been able to get back to that level he was at last year before his accident. Aaron, um, I can see how you can think that, but no, I don't think Eli um, should have retired. I actually think Eli's fine. You know, the fact is, like, Eli's doing better than I was, you know, when I wasn't able to win races. And I, I know we expect so much from Eli, because he is second all time. And when he's on, he's one of the fastest guys we've ever seen in this field. But Eli Tomac does not suck. Eli Tomac is actually doing really good. And as you get older, just like anything, you appreciate certain things. You enjoy doing certain things more because you know it means something. And I think with Eli, I think this is really just dictated off circumstances. When Eli is firing, the way he looked in that heat race, you didn't think he should retire then, and this ain't directed towards you because a lot of people think that, but I think Eli's doing a great job considering he came off a gnarly injury, considering how deep this field is. fact is, like, he was able to win one of these races and still have speed. It just might not be every weekend, and therefore maybe Eli feels like, it, and the way I felt, like, I'm not, if I can't win every single weekend, then I don't really want to be there, but... Eli Tomac ain't riding like a guy that shouldn't be out there. And no, I don't think he should retire. I think he's doing a great job, but only Eli knows that. And um, I think he's doing fine. So no, I don't think he should retire. Spry asks, with starts being huge this year, is it almost having a negative impact on some people in the sense that if they get a bad start, they just kind of ride where they're at rather than in years past, they charge to the lead regardless? Spry, that, that is... Yeah, see, I got we got some intelligent fans here. Like our fans know, they know what they they ask the right question on the rewind show. They know what they kind of look. Yes, the starts have been so important that I do think it does dictate a lot of guys, and not because they're like ah whatever I can't win, but because the field is so deep, and they kind of know, even if they're you know firing at all cylinders, everybody's so close that you got to be firing like way better. You got to ride better than you ever have to even move up through the pack. And that's like risk. So I don't know if some people could be that they're riding just as good as they are out front. I feel like even with Eli and Tomac, I think, you know, last few weekends, things have been a little bit different because I've seen him move up to the pack. And then once he realized he can't win, like then maybe settles, but guys get like Levi kitchen outdoors, they get 13th and then they come back and ride the same and win the race. So maybe guys are getting bad starts and they're riding exactly the same, but because the field is so deep that it looks like they just kind of give up rather than, no, they're riding the same. They just got a bad start and people are just that good. And they can't move up to the field because how deep it is. That could be a part of some of it. And then some guys, yeah, if you're all about winning, you see Jet Lawrence out front, that's all you're about, then yeah, it's kind of hard to be fighting for second place. But I just think the field's deep. Guys are trying. Just start to makes them finish kind of where they at. And that's because of how good everybody else is. Thank you guys for submitting your questions. And you know what time it is. My favorite time, your favorite time, stews with stew. All right, first, you know what we gotta do. As always, we get in the same thing as always. We always say the same thing, we say that. Stew, guy that does better than everybody else. The guy has more than wood, but still has figured out how to lay it out and get the job done even when he's all pumped up. A guy that just comes out of the middle of nowhere, but he's been there the whole time. Guy that rides the same all year long, but just this time he wrote the same, but he was way better than everybody else. Stu! All right, first, since this is first one in the Triple Crown format that's not here, I'm going with Levi Kitchen. I'm going with you first, son, because it's your first non-Triple Crown 
neck burn. It's your first real fire feeling the flame neck burn because they actually got the neck burn. And the way you were dominant, this is probably the most dominant Supercross victory that you ever had. Well, yeah, because I think you won some of the Triple Crowns without winning some of your Triple Crowns. But tonight, you left no, no hesitation that who was the best. And you said kitchen was open everyone except for Jordan Smith. He couldn't get in. He couldn't get in. He was upset. He ran off the track. He was mad. He was mad. Then he knocked the wind out. He's like, and he sent a text. He's like, oh. And then he came back, and they were like, ooh. But you were out front getting that, ah, oh, that neck burn. And that's what you got. So Levi Kitchen, that makes you a stew. Free food for everybody except for the Smith. And next, I almost said Jet Lawrence because I would just keep saying it. And he, he is a stew. I mean, he was fast. I mean, he probably could get a stew. But the next guy, he's got a few of these snooze. And I always say it ain't because he's going fast. It ain't because he just jumped something. Did he? He was going somewhat fast. I mean, you got to be going fast to win a race. You didn't got to be the fastest, but you be going pretty fast. So I can't say he ain't going that fast. And he did jump the wall jump, which Chase wasn't jumped in wall jump. So he did something different. So normally that makes you a stew, but he was coming up short. His feet was off. But Cooper Webb, because he said he had a wood morning. Good morning. Arms about as hard as morning wood right now. <laughs> And we all know what that is, but he said it, and he was like, dang, he really just said that after he won, but, like, it made sense. He was like, oh, okay, I get the arm pump. So, because he can never translate and make people understand what arm pump feels like, that makes you a stew. So, for explaining what you had, which it looked like you had, yeah, you won, and you figured out a win, but you always kind of do that, that makes you a stew. So, Cooper Webb, getting the job done when you're packing, you're packing large, get it done. So that makes you a stew. And next, stew, pissed off. Pissed off because you'd be like, man, I've been fast all year long. And normally I can pass this dude. Only time I don't pass him is when he decides he don't want to jump on top of the tabletop. I jump on top of the tabletop and he don't jump on top of the tabletop because he thought he was going to see another flag and there wasn't no flag there. And then I land onto him and people get mad at me because they tell me I'm crazy. And then I'm up here and he's pulling away. He had the kitchen open to everybody. He said free food and he wouldn't let me in. And he told me to send the text and I sent the text and I got dumped. And ever since I got dumped, I've been dumping on the ground. Stu, pissed off. Jordan Smith, you pissed off. You still riding good. And you're like, wait a minute. I'm riding the best I have. I just had the double red plate with Levi. And Jay said I was the best. He told me to send the text, and I sent it. And then I sent it, and then I get dumped. But I'm still cool. You said I was fine. And then I'm still fast. And I was suspecting to pass Levi. Like I have been all year long. I've been fast. But this dude kept pulling the wave. And then he wouldn't let me in the kitchen. And then I hit the ground, knocked the wind out of me. And people said I should pull off the track because I'm crazy. I'm crazy. I am crazy. I'm crazy good. But it wasn't nothing like that. These tracks got ruts in it. What do you want me to expect? I'm trying to win. I'm trying to win. But I'm pissed off because I did something that I haven't done all year long. And that was actually end up outside of what? What? What, what happened? I don't even know what happened. You went down. Your visor stayed on. So at the end of the day, I don't even know why you, should, you shouldn't be mad. Like, you're still riding really good. And, yeah, you lost some points. And, yeah, you're going to have to knock down the kitchen or burn that thing down. But Jordan Smith, you still got a chance. So I know you stew, but you all right. And then my other stew is Chase Sexton. Chase Sexton. Now, all year long, you've been fast, but not quite as fast as you normally are fast, but you've been fast. And you're starting to ride better, and you're starting to do your thing. And then, like, yeah, the bike's getting better, and you're, like, happy, and you're leading some laps. And then, yes, your mechanic put on the pit board, like jumped the wall, but it wasn't big enough. You can't see that stuff. Don't you know? You'd be looking at the ant. You ain't even trying to worry. You're trying to get the thing zipped out. But then they come up here and they talk about, oh, Jet Lawrence, he's fast. Cooper Webb, he ain't fast, but he's always fast and he ended up passing me. But you stood because the bike's shutting off. You're like, look, man, I got enough challenges out here. I need to be out here doing my thing. And I got to worry about stalling and people talking about it. I don't even ride my hands on the clutch. I didn't even think about that, but hey, maybe I don't. I got other issues, but riding with the hand on the clutch ain't one of them. But I'm stewed because even when I'm firing, even when this guy got in morning wood, and even when dudes are out there stalling it, jumping it, taking out people, and they at their best, but they ain't at their best, I'm still trying to get it done. But don't be stewed, Chase. You riding good. You're getting there. 
but I know you pissed off, which actually I don't even know you pissed off because you didn't sound pissed off. So maybe you're not stupid. So maybe I should take you off the list, but yeah, you're on the list because I don't want to redo this segment. So you're going to have to stay on there. And Joe Shimoda, I don't even know. Like, I thought you were going to be stupid, but you ain't stupid. And you're actually kind of happy because you should be happy because you wrote pretty good. But then I said you had to get off the gate. But some people, when they get off the gate, it's like you watch guys when they don't get off the gate, they come up through the pack like, man, if they would have got off the gate, they'd have won. But when they get off the gate, they don't go as fast as they was when they don't get off the gate. And that's kind of where it was. So I think Joe Shimoda, Far East Coast, maybe you're just saving it for outdoors. Maybe you're saving it for the XMX championship, the playoffs. I don't know what you're saving it for, but get off the gate. Don't get off the gate. Rod, same. But you should be winning, just like your teammate, Chance Hines. What's up, Chance? I'm still going to get on you because you should be winning. But Joe Shimoda, and you can almost be confused, but whatever. You wrote good. You solid. All right, people. That was it. I think that was it. That was it from round 11. It should be 11. Cole told me like nine. Well, you told me 11 like two weeks ago. You got JS math going on. You got JS math. Five out of four people. Five out of four people. But that was it. Where well, we saw Cooper Webb with the morning wood get it done. And we saw Levi have a boring race. It was like Levi, he was serving charity out there. Like he had a charity event. Free food, free turkeys for everyone. Except for Jordan Smith. He couldn't get in there. But Levi did his thing. Cooper Webb did his thing. Chase did his thing. Jet was doing his thing until he couldn't do his thing. And then everybody else, Eli, don't quit, man. Don't listen to him. You solid. You solid. And everybody else, they solid. But until next time, that'll be it for this time. <clears throat> what did I normally say, Cole? I don't think I say anything. No, I usually just walk off. Okay. Say, till next time. And yeah, and then you storm off. You heard the man. <laughs>